Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and today we're going to make the Fan Stitch Baby Blanket. This is another in the Easy Beginner series. I think you'll find this to be very achievable, especially if you're a, a beginner and haven't been crocheting very long. And it'll definitely give you practice on the double crochet. The only thing new that you're going to be learning is you're going to learn how to do a pico, which you'll find is very easy. It just involves working a slip stitch and three chains. Well, let's go ahead and get started. For this easy beginner fan stitch baby blanket, I'm going to be using these two colors. I'm actually going to be using two scans of this color and three of the solid, but do feel free to use whichever colors you like if you just want to mix solids or if you even just wanted to make it one solid color without changing yarns. These yarns, um, Stitch Studio by Nicole, Storybook Fanfare, and then this other is called Storybook Lullaby. Um, these were both purchased at my local AC Moore store, um, but feel free to use any other size three weight, or if you want to use a regular worsted weight yarn, just make sure that you upsize the hook for that. Here are the stats on these yarns. This is 100% acrylic. Um, this scan has 265 yards um, per scan. And again, this is a number three, which is a light or a DK weight yarn. And let me show you something here that the um, the yardage is slightly smaller on the variegated is 255 yards per scan. Again, I'm going to need three of these and two of these. And I'll go ahead and put the yarn estimate numbers right along the bottom of the screen there so that you can have that should you substitute another type of yarn. And you're also going to be using, or I'm going to be using, a size H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. And as always, I suggest that you have a yarn needle on hand, especially for this project, because we are going to be changing yarn colors and you're going to want to be careful how we do that. And also a pair of scissors so that you can switch colors without, um, you know, tearing the yarn or anything like that. This is very important. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on our crochet. Now we're ready to begin. We're going to start with a slip knot. And just to show you how I like to chain, I like to start in um, sets of five. So in case I get interrupted, I know which number I'm on, especially since we are going to be chaining 127 chains. One, two, three, four, five. And I reposition my fingers. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. As I do this, I want to remind you to try to do this on the loose side so that the chain is not too tight when you work in it. If you tend to crochet too tightly, I would encourage you to bump up to perhaps a size eye needle or, or hook just for the chain and then go back to the regular size hook after that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my chain of 127 chains. One more thing I wanted to mention because I get a lot of correspondence, which is welcomed, um, about how to make your projects larger or smaller. If you want to make this larger than approximately 30 inches across, what you're going to need to do is add stitches to the existing 127 stitches here um, in increments of five or in multiples of five. If you want the blanket to be smaller, you simply subtract multiples of five from the starting chain. To begin, we're going to start in the fourth chain from hook. So we're going to find one, two, three, four. That's the fourth chain right here. And we are going to work two double crochets. a chain one and two more double crochets all in that one chain space. Okay, just like that. Now we're going to skip four chains. One, I'll use my hook to point them. One, two, three, four. We're going to skip those and in the next chain we're going to work two Again, two double crochets, one, two, and we're going to chain one, and then we're going to work two more double crochets, one, two, in that same chain space, and that is the way the fan stitch 
is going to look throughout this project. Let me do a couple more of these with you. Now we're going to skip four more chains. One, two, three, four. And then in the next, we're going to work again two double crochets, a chain one, and then two double crochets again, all in that same chain space. And now we have three fan stitches. So go ahead and work this all the way across your starting chain. After working this all the way across the row, we're going to skip the next two chains and in that last chain, we're going to work a double crochet. So let's pause and take a look. And you might want to take the time to double check to make sure that you have the two double crochets, a chain one, and the two double crochets evenly spaced across your row. Okay, because if you have a mistake at this point, it's very, it's much more simple to correct it than when you're at the end of yet another row. Okay, so after we complete this row, that's the end of row one, we're ready to go on to row two. We're going to turn and we're going to chain two, one, two, and we're going to skip the first stitch. And we're going to skip the next two double crochets as well. And in that chain one space, that hole between um, the middle of the fan stitch, we're going to work another fan stitch, which is two double crochets. A chain one. And two double crochets all worked in that same space. Okay, just like this. And we're going to do this all the way across the row. We are going to skip the next two double crochets here and the next two double crochets here as well until we get to the next chain one space. And then we work another fan stitch, which is two double crochets, chain one, and two more double crochets in that chain one space. Now, if you're not really familiar with the double crochet, I encourage you to go back to my um, beginning videos, which is on my Bonnie, Bo Bonnie Bay Crochet channel, and take a look at that. Um, but should you need to slow my work down at all, in this video, if you look at the bottom right side here, there's a little thing that looks like a gear. If you click on that, you can actually slow this video down or really any video on YouTube that you would like. You can um, slow down in, uh, to a variety of speeds. Okay, so I'm going to do this a couple more times with you. Skip these two stitches and skip the next two stitches. And then working in that chain one space in between the fan stitch, go ahead and work two double crochets. a chain one and two more double crochets and we're going to call this a fan stitch. And let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like now. Okay. So I'm going to have you go ahead and we're going to work this all the way across the row. I'll do it with you one more time. Skip these two and skip the next two double crochets working in that chain one space two double crochets, a chain one, and two double crochets. So go ahead and work this all the way across the row. After working these all the way across the row, working in the chain one space only, we're going to work a double crochet in the space right here where the turning chain was worked. So just work a double crochet there. And now we are going to turn and we're going to repeat this. So I'm going to show you how to do this again, chain two. And what I'm going to show you is pretty much what we're going to do from this point on. Okay, we're going to skip the first stitch here as always and the next two double crochets. And we're going to work the fan stitch, which is two double crochets, 
a chain one, and then two double crochets in that chain one space in between the fan stitches. And like we did in row number two, we're going to skip these next two double crochets and the next two, and we're going to go to the next chain one space in between the fan stitch, and we're going to work a fan stitch in there. Two double crochets, chain one, and two double crochets. So I'm going to give you a longer assignment here. I'm going to have you work this all the way across and back. So work this for two more rows and then I will show you how to change colors. Don't forget that when you get to the end, let me see if I can find it here, the end of this row after you work the fan stitch in that chain one space, we're just going to work a double crochet in the chain two space here and then turn. Okay, so go ahead and work this for two more rows using the solid color. So in order to do this, I have worked all but the last stitch. I still need to work the stitch, the double crochet in that turning chain. And this is the way I'm going to do that. I'm going to wrap the hook, insert the hook, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Now I'm going to stop. I'm going to grab the yarn that I'm switching to and I'm going to pull that through for that last step. Now I'm going to turn, chain two, one, two, and I'm going to go ahead and work another row. I'm going to skip the next three stitches and I'm just going to start this row. We'll do two double crochets, chain one, and two more double crochets. So you can see that's going to look fun as I change. But now I wanted to show you this is how do you deal with this so that these stitches do not come undone? Great question. Let's go ahead and I'm going to clip the original color I was just working with. And what I like to do, since I know that I'm going to be working a perimeter round all the way around the blanket at the end, it's not a problem if I tie a knot here. And I know some people like to do this without knots. If that's you, feel free to do whatever method you choose. But I'm going to do a simpler method here. I'm just going to tie a knot like this and push it kind of close to your work and go ahead and pull it tight because that's not going to come out. I'm going to, um, we're going to deal with this again once we work our perimeter round. So there, um, it looks fine. Okay, the, the, it's going to be pretty seamless. And once again, once we do the perimeter round, we're going to cover up all the knots and everything. And it'll be all hidden and it'll look great. All right, so, so what we're going to do now is we are just going to work four rows of the fan stitch. And just going to continue that for four rows. And as I said before, once we do that, we will switch the yarn again and using the same technique that I did here so that the yarn looks seamless in starting the new color. And so go ahead and switch after every four rounds. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I will show you what I have after I complete um, these stripes. Now that I've completed a total of 12 stripes, Go ahead. I will give you a better view of this towards the end. Um, but I have seven stripes with the solid color and five stripes with the ombre color yarn. And so now I am ready to start working my border. But before I do that, I want to change back to my ombre colored yarn. So I'll go ahead and show you that yarn change. So I'm going to just gently pull this last stitch out like that. And we're going to bring this new color in. And go ahead and give it a chain. And I'm going to go ahead and clip this yarn of the solid color. And I'm going to go ahead and knot these together. Okay. I can 
I can make that knot a little bit better once I, well, let's go ahead and do that now. Make sure that it's very secure. Um, now we are going to make our first corner. Now this first corner is going to be a little different. I have one, two, let's go ahead and do three chains. That's going to serve as one of our double crochets. Now our fan stitch has been worked with two double crochets, one chain and two double crochets. For the corners, I'm actually going to double that. I'm going to make four double crochets. Now this counts as one. Remember the chain counts as one. So, and I just made the second one, three and four. And then I'm going to do a chain. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do two chains for this corner. And I'm going to do four more double crochets. One, two. I'm just going to crochet over that knot there. Three and four. Now I'm going to have to obviously have to hide these, um, these strands later and I will deal with that when the time comes. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to be working alongside the edging. Now notice I didn't turn from this last row here. So we are going to start working the fan stitch along the edging. And this is the way I'm going to do this. It's going to be very easy. You don't have to do a perimeter round first. This will be our perimeter round. We're going to skip the next row end here. And then we're going to work a fan stitch, which is the two double crochets. chain one and two more double crochets in that row and space. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to skip the next row end here. And then I'm going to go to the next row end and work that again. Two double crochets, chain one and two double crochets. Okay, so I'm going to have you work that all the way across on the row ends. Again, skip the next stitch or, or rather the row end space here and then work another fan stitch in the next row end. Those two double crochets, chain one and two more double crochets. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to work this all the way to the next corner. After working all the way across the row edges, I'm going to have you skip the last two um, row edges and then we're going to work in this turning chain right here, which was part of the very beginning of the foundation. And we're going to work four double crochets, just like we did, well sort of like we did at the beginning because when we were establishing this we were um, using a chain three, but we did, we're going to do four double crochets. Go ahead and chain two and four more double crochets for that corner turn. And I want to speak about one other thing, having finished this row edge with all these strings, I am going to wait until the very end, until the border is completely done, because I think there's going to be a lot more, a uh, lot more fabric with this border in order to uh, weave some of these loose ends into. Okay, you can do however you want. But I, I am just, I am going to wait till the very end to do that because I'm actually crocheting over some of these knots. It's hiding them somewhat, um, but once we get this border done, we'll have a lot more fabric to work with and to, to hide those loose ends. After working those eight double crochets and that chain two for the corner, we're going to skip the next space here and the next space. And we're going to go to the third space, which is where the second of the fan stitches were crocheted. And we're going to crochet a fan stitch there, which is two double crochets, a chain one, and two double crochets. Let me show you what we should have here. That way this corner doesn't get too crowded there with the stitches. And so go ahead and work that in each of the spaces where the fan stitches were worked for row one. 
Okay, let me show you, I'll show you this again. So we're going to skip these chains here and then go right to the spot where the next fan stitch was worked. And we'll work two double crochets, chain one, and two more double crochets. Okay. So we are skipping this one just for the sake of space and for um, for unity so that it doesn't look too crowded there. So go ahead and work these all the way across until you get to the last space. Yes, we are going to skip that last um, space, but I'll show that to you when we get there. But just for now, go ahead and work these fan stitches all the way across. After working this all the way across, go ahead and skip the chain and skip the, the place where this last uh, fan stitch was worked and work in the next chain space. You'll have a combination of a chain and, and a double crochet there um, coming at that intersection. So go ahead and work four double crochets. Chain two, one, two, and then work four more double crochets. So want to make sure these corners are nice and clearly defined. Okay, so just as we did in the last um, side, let me go back to that side here, where we skipped um, two row ends. We're going to do that again so that this blanket is symmetrical. We're going to skip this row end and this row end, and we're going to start way up here with another fan stitch, which will be two double crochets, chain one, and two more double crochets. I'm going to go ahead and pause so that you can see that corner. Okay, these stitches are going to continue to grow, so um, don't worry about if there's any bulging there. It shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so now we're going to go back to what we did at the very beginning of this round. We're going to skip the next row end, and in the next row end, we're going to work two double crochets, a chain one, and two double crochets. Okay, so go ahead and work that all the way across this last end. Once you've worked those fan stitches in every other row end all the way across, now we do have one side left to do. So we're going to skip this last row end, and then in this space here, which is going to be our corner, we're going to work again four double crochets, a chain two, and then four more double crochets. And I'll pause so that you can see what I've worked there. So after working that corner space here, go ahead and skip this fan stitch just like we did at the the other end of this blanket and then go to the next fan stitch and work those two double crochets chain one two double crochets in that space this I believe is going to help to square up the blanket a bit and so that the um, edges don't ruffle out too much now if you wanted to work in that first stitch you can but I, I think it's going to add just a little bit of um, a little bit of unevenness to it. So now we're going to go ahead and do this all the way across, working those fan stitches in the, the top um, chain one space. Go ahead and do, let me go ahead and pull the rest of that through, go ahead and do that all the way across. After working all the way across, go ahead and skip this last fan stitch, and we're going to connect with a slip stitch to the turning chain of that very first corner. Okay, so now we've completed one row. So now we're going to, or actually one round, let's go ahead and slip stitch across. And you can do this without turning like this. We're going to slip stitch to that first stitch, or actually the first double crochet, second, and then slip stitch to the next stitch. And then we're going to slip stitch right in to the corner, just like this. After slip stitching to that chain two corner, we're going to work a special corner stitch. This is the last round. We're going to chain three 
This does count as a double crochet. And that's our second stitch. And our third stitch. Every third double crochet, we're going to do something a little special here. Um, again, this chain counts as a double crochet, two, three. Then we're going to chain three. And we're going to make a pico by taking our hook and inserting it in to the top of that double crochet and pull up a loop and pull a loop through. And this way we make a little pico at the top of that third stitch. And so now we're going to do two more stitches. One, these are double crochets, two, and the third double crochet like this. We're going to do another pico. We're going to chain three. And we're going to do a slip stitch in the top of that double crochet just like we did before. And we're going to do this again. One double crochet, two double crochets, and then on the third double crochet we're going to do another pico chain three and slip stitch in the top of that double crochet. Okay, this is what we have so far. I'm going to go ahead and then we're going to do two more stitches, two more double crochets in that same space. Then I'm going to give you the count so that this is not um, totally overwhelming and confusing. So we have one, which is the chain, two, three, and we have the pico here, four, five, six, another pico at the top of there, seven, eight, nine, where we have the pico, ten, and then eleven. So we actually have 11 double crochets and three picots in that corner stitch. After completing the corner with those three picots, we're going to look at this four double crochet cluster and we're going to work in between the second and the third stitch, which right in the center of this cluster, we're going to go ahead and split that and we're going to work one, two double crochets and then a third double crochet. After that third, we're going to work a pico, one, two, three chains, and then we're going to slip stitch in the top of that double crochet, and then we're going to work two more double crochets. Okay, just like that. And we're going to work that in between each um, of the fan stitches, so we'll skip the space here, and in this next space, we will work three double crochets, a chain three, one, two, three, and insert the hook in the top of that double crochet, pull up a loop, pull it through so you have your pico, and then two more double crochets. I just want to stop and show that to you. So you're going to have a total of five double crochets in worked in each of the fan stitches. Now, of course, the corner is going to look like this, and I will I will show that to you one more time when we get to the next corner. But we're going to have one, two, three double crochets, work the chain three pico, and then two more double crochets. So go ahead and work that all the way to the next corner. After working these all the way across, now we are going to work another one of these five double crochet with the pico clusters in between the four stitches here. So go ahead and work those three double crochets, a chain three, one, two, three, and then a slip stitch in the top of that stitch, and then two more double crochets. Let me just stop there so that you can see that. Now we're going to work another corner in this corner stitch. And the way we do that is we work one, two, three double crochets, followed by that chain three, one, two, three, and work that pico in the top of that double crochet, and then one, two, three more stitches, and then work another pico and slip stitch in the top of that. And then do that one more time. One, two, three, chain three, and slip stitch in the top of that double crochet. 
and then two more double crochets. Okay, so this is for that turning of the corner. And after we've done that, we're going to be working along another edge. So go ahead and skip the next two stitches. And again, this is the four stitch cluster of the corner that we worked the previous round. So work between the second and the third stitch, just that space. Just go ahead and make a space there and work three double crochets, just like we've been doing. Chain three and a slip stitch to form that picot in the top of that double crochet. And then two more double crochets. And just like what we've done on the other side, go ahead and work one of these five double crochet with the picot clusters in the top of every of every one of the fan stitches across. One, two, three, chain three, slip stitch in the top, and then two more double crochets. Okay, so go ahead, so I'll go ahead and show you the the corners and go ahead and work this all the way around the rest of the blanket and making sure that you do the corners in the same manner. At the end of this final round we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three just like that and I'm going to give it a chain and tug and give it a little pull there and go ahead and clip a nice long strand so that we can hide these loose strands. So let me go ahead and show you how to hide this particular strand and you'll have a lot of practice on this with all the strands along the edge for hiding these. Okay, um, There is no right or wrong side so much on this uh, particular baby blanket but you want to take this and bring it down into the stitches like so, and since this is a variegated kind of color, let's go ahead and bring it down here. It should actually be kind of easy to hide. And I'm actually gonna hide it under all of these double crochets because that's a great place to hide loose strands. Okay, I'm gonna bring it under all of those, see that? I doubt this is gonna go anywhere. So give a little, little tug there and clip closely but make sure that you don't clip your crochet. And that stitch is now hidden from sight. And so now all I need to do is continue to hide all of these other strands. Well, I hope you enjoyed making this baby blanket with me today. If you did, if you could just hit that little bell, that'll let me know that you enjoyed it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the new offerings that I have coming your way. God bless. Bye-bye.